coming off what is arguably the worst road trip of the Quinn Snyder era and an embarrassing loss in Detroit the other night, the Cleveland Cavaliers of Cleveland uh, invade the uh, Vimint Arena tonight in what a lot of people want to classify as a must-win game. No, nah, I'm not a lot of people. I don't think this is a must-win game, but it sure would be nice to get a win tonight uh, against the Cavs. And when you look at where the, the Jazz are, Jake, do you feel like they've fallen out of, I don't know, is it respect? Do you believe that they're still one of the top teams in the NBA? Well, I mean, yeah, they're, they're you know, by stat and by rank and by win-loss column they are. I mean, they're, you know, 28 and 13, like they're in a fine place, but... The truth is, is they've done nothing to make the league respect them. They've done nothing to to make it so that other teams have to be like, yeah, wow, this is a team that we have to fear. I mean, there's no question about how to beat the Jazz anymore, and and that's the issue. And and so you know, if you look, if you're looking just at the Western Conference win loss column, you've got the Suns at 31 and nine, the Warriors at 30 and 10. Then you've got the Jazz at 28 and 13, and the Grizzlies at 29 and 14. And then you've got this huge fall off to the Mavericks at 22 wins. So, yeah, I mean, the Jazz by win loss record are still one of the best teams in the league. But the, when we're talking about the grouping of those four teams in the West, the other three teams have no reason to fear the Jazz, you know? I mean, again, and, and people were not amused, you said this earlier in the week, but I think it's so true. You know, that series that the Jazz had against the Grizzlies last year probably goes a different way this year. You wait, know? wait, wait, wait. Stop right there. Yeah. Put some respect on that John ja Morant name. Yeah, dude. Buddy is... Um, Come on. Yeah, dude. Come on. He's... Tell me how great I am. Yeah, you're great. Tell me how I, smart I am. You're great. I'm tell, for real. Tell me how good looking I am. Yeah, you're just the sex goddess tell me how of good everything. Looking, good, good looking I am. Anyway, how about the Memphis Grizzlies? Yeah. They did your boy Steph dirty last night. Yeah, they did. I'm telling you, that team is for real. Desmond and I, Bain. I feel like I, I have I have been the lonely man on the train all season long on the Memphis Grizzlies on this show. Uh-huh. And I think last night they continue to back that up. Like, And this to the, the point about the Jazz is, yeah. I don't believe they're a top five team in the Western Conference right now. Well, again, so if I mean, so looking at the other teams in the league that you know could potentially be a, a top five team, you know, um, you know, you've got <clears throat> again the Nuggets are twenty and nineteen. The Nuggets are eight wins behind the Jazz. You've got the Lakers at twenty one and twenty, right? Seven, you know, seven wins behind the Jazz. You know, you got the Clippers at a five hundred team right now. You know, twenty one and twenty one. Like you, these teams you know, are just not performing. They're not They're not doing what the Jazz have done. But it's like this weird dynamic with the Jazz. Hey, you know, you're a 28-win team right now, which is good for third in the West. Hey, that's something to be proud of. But, uh, you know, again, you're just not – nobody fears you. That's the thing. That's the hard part, you know. You are a good team. Yes, you are one of the best teams in the Western Conference, you know. But nobody fears you in the postseason. John Morant's not scared. You know, Steph is not worried. You know, Devin Booker is not worried. You know, and that's got to yeah. change. And I don't know, again, I, I feel like, you know, I know this is probably a tired conversation, but but this is why bringing in something fresh to this roster is so important because if you can do that and get some fresh energy on the team, maybe that changes your fortunes. Yeah, I, I mean, if if I had to pick right now, you know, top teams in the in the West. Yeah. Um, I mean, certainly Golden State, I think certainly Phoenix, even though Devin Booker's busy fighting with mascots in Toronto last night, like, <laughs> look, book, book's my dude, but that was weak shit. Like, yeah. I can't, I do not know what he was looking at right there. It's a mascot, bro. Who cares? Like, if that's, yeah, like yeah, if that's going to distract you from making a free throw, you're weak. And that was a weak moment for my guy. Yeah. Admittedly. Yeah. But I think Golden State and the Suns are by far the two best teams in the NBA and in the Western Conference. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a lot of parity after that. I actually would put Memphis third right now. If we're, if we're really looking at the hierarchy and the, the best of the best in the Western Conference, yeah. as we stand today on January 12th, I can't put the Clippers there. In May, are we going to put the Clippers there? Yeah, we probably are. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the last 10 games for these teams, right? I mean, obviously the Grizzlies are hot. They've won their last 10. They're 10-0 and in their last 10. Great. But you've got, and this is what I think is really interesting, the consistency of the other three teams at the top of the West. 
The Suns are six and four in their last ten. The Warriors are six and four in their last ten. The Jazz are six and four in their last ten. But the difference is, is the Jazz have lost their last three, right? The Warriors obviously just lost to Memphis. So I don't know. These teams, like the NBA season is a marathon. You know, it's gonna have ebbs, it's gonna have flows, ups and downs, but it just feels like, you know, the Jazz are in this odd position because of how many guys are in protocol. And because when Rudy's not on the floor, there's a lot of exposure to how weak the perimeter defense That's is. That's right. And it and it ha- it brings, you know, there's this middle ground we have to find. Like I feel like after the Pistons lost, the way they lost that game, there was a lot of, hey, this team is Rudy and everybody else. The defense sucks. Don wasn't good enough. Like I feel like the fan base was very negative. And it is warranted. A lot of that is, stuff is warranted, but then you know, what are we going to say next week when they, you know, tear off five in a row? You know, and that's the tough part about this team. They're going to bounce back. You know they are. But that bounce back when you get into the postseason just isn't enough. And that's the problem. Do you trust the Utah Jazz? No. Right now I don't. And I just go back to what we talked about yesterday on the show as far as Rudy. And, hey, it's cool that Rudy's your MVP. And if, in fact, that it, it is the case that Rudy's your most valuable player on this team – Right now, the way they're built, I think it's hard to argue that. Mm-hmm. But if that is indeed the the situation, you're not a title contender. Because, again, I don't think Rudy Gobert can be the, the best player on your team or the most important player, the MVP of your team, mm-hmm. and you win a championship. Because he's just not dynamic. He is not a guy that, you know, outside of his defense, and, and really, let's be honest, outside of rim and paint protection – Rudy Gobert is a very limited contributor. And, you know, you you look at the high pick and roll, that's not going to work in the postseason. We've proven that. We've seen that. This is not one of the elite teams. And, again, if I look up and down the standings right now, just in the West, I think you have three teams that are better uh, than the Utah Jazz. In the East, I'm certainly taking the Chicago Bulls the way they're playing right now. Um, DeMar DeRozan's playing out of his mind. Yeah. I, you want to talk about MVPs? I mean, DeMar DeRozan is now finally getting MVP consideration. Yeah. Right? So I think they're playing very well. Um, I look at the way that the Miami Heat are playing, whether Jimmy's on the floor or not. Mm-hmm. That's a very difficult team to, to, to account for. Are they better than the Utah Jazz? Mm. I'm not ready to say Probably they're better. Not. I think they're even. Probably, right? Even or a touch below. But who, who's the elephant in the room in the East? Well, it's the Milwaukee Bucks. Are the Milwaukee Bucks better than the Utah Jazz? Yeah. I would think so at this point. I mean, the way that Giannis is shooting the ball, it's no longer, hey, he's, he's hot. Giannis Antetokounmpo has turned himself into a pretty good shooter. Yeah. Um, they're a force to be reckoned with. So that's five right there. And, oh, by the way, don't forget about the Brooklyn Nets. I don't know what the, the Nets are. <clears throat> with Harden out with this knee injury now, um, Kyrie complaining about Nasir Little trying to break his ankle. Like, I don't know what the Brooklyn Nets are. And honestly, if that game's in Salt Lake City, I don't know that the Brooklyn Nets come in here and win. Yeah, well, I think the thing for the Nets in that situation is the problem is that they're not a great defensive team, and the Jazz are the number one offensive team in the league at 115 points a game. So that's not a recipe for success if you're the Nets. So. Yeah. But I think that you know, on the other side of that, the talent, and this is this is the game the Nets play, and this is what you know the bet that they made essentially, which is we're not going to be an elite defensive team, but we're going to put up 130 points a night on you, you know, and and when they're at full strength, they do that. So I I think that'd be a fascinating series. I'd have to lean to the the Jazz in that. I mean, I'd have to know who's healthy. Yeah. I mean, if Kyrie Kyrie would play in that game, obviously. Hmm. I probably it's pretty even. I'd probably lean to the Jazz. Yeah. Anyway, all all of that to say, I I don't think the Jazz are top five. There are they top ten certainly, um, but I look at the way. <laughs> excuse me. Why am I getting COVID? Oh, are you okay? It, it drives me crazy. This little cough drives me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, not. Dude. It's, it's not some major thing. It's just this little cough that it's sneaks up on you. It's hanging around. Um, but if you look at the Philadelphia 76ers right now, that, that's why I say this Cavalier game tonight's not a must win. This is a game you need to win, though. Yeah. The, it, the, you're, you're playing against a team that is elite defensively in the Cleveland Cavaliers. They are very good defensively. Mm-hmm. I think they give up around 102 point something points a game. Yeah. You score 115. Well, and there are only five wins behind you. 
They're, it's not like they're a 10-win team. They're, they got 23 wins. But how do they generally, if you look at the Cleveland Cavaliers, and this is why this game will be interesting tonight, this is a game that, in my mind, the Jazz should win by double digits. Yeah. This should be a 10-point win. Yeah. Only it's not a 10-point win. The, because of the way the Jazz play, the way that they're built, and now with Rudy you know, you know, know, in and out of the lineup, yep. you see what they're not defensively without Rudy Gobert. And I look at guys like Garland, Mo, at what Evan Mobley is giving them. Yeah. Well, and he's he's the classic issue for the Jazz, right? I mean, Evan Mobley is, what is he, 6'9", or something like that? He's got tremendous length for his position, um, and he can do things, and he can cause Six, issues. Uh, excuse me, 6'11", 215 6'11". I mean, that's incredible length out of a 3'4 hybrid player. He's not a 5, but he's a 3'4 hybrid guy. He's a 3'4", because he's not a big physical player, but yeah. he's in the right place at the right time. So, But you, if, if you look at Markkanen, um Mobley and Garland, Mm -hmm. those three will give the Jazz trouble. And then I don't know what you get from Jared Allen in this game. Uh, Because the other question is, where are we at on Hassan Whiteside now? Now that he's – and you're seeing why he came at the price that he came at to the Jazz. Mm -hmm. Because I think now that you're you're looking at him being bumped up to your number one, to your rim protector, you're seeing why he isn't a number one center in the NBA. Because mentally he fatigues very quickly – and he can be had physically. He's, he goes off in the first half the other night, and then you really don't see him the rest of the game. And in the fourth quarter, he got beat routinely at the rack. Yeah. And I think that's why you're seeing that he was so readily available to the Jazz. Yes. You know, so you would think that Hassan can hold his own with, with Allen, right? But Jared Allen's a guy that, you know, it, he he's putting up, you know, the other night, what did he have, 18 and 17? Yeah, Jared Allen's a guy that's that's tough. I mean, he's he's... He's not looking to get into a fight with you, but he's a gritty player. You know, he's not going to be pushed around. And I, and I think that, you know, Jared Allen is somebody who is a great rim protector. You know, he's yeah. right up there. And, and I'm not saying, you know, in terms of defensive player of the year or like total package as a player, but just straight up jumping rim protector guy. He's right up there with the best of them in the league. Um, so that will be really interesting to see. But but I think if you're the Jazz, you know, this is this is not a must win game by like you know your seasons you know measure but i think for you as a team and and where the locker room is at mentally and where like where what you're trying to do this is a game you really need well, to win and you're you're at home you're yeah, back I mean, home you need, you need after the piston thing you need something to feel good about and this is would you agree this is one of the worst road trips that they've had yeah. with quinn Stein? well and here's the thing I, I think the other thing that no one's talking about is this team like this team is allowed to struggle at some point you know and that and and this is the thing that that i think needs to be said we have to be careful with hey you know burn the whole thing to the ground because they lost to the pistons but the way you lost to the pistons raises some pretty serious questions so like I just think that this team needs something to feel good about right now. They need, you know, even if you beat this team by 25, great. Now, you know, we're back to what we were doing, you know? Like, it'd be that's nice, what this game's about. It would be nice to beat the Cavs by 25 and have Donovan score 50. Yeah, you know, it would you be know? nice to have Donovan on Sports Center after posterizing yeah. Jared Allen, you know? Yeah, but, and that's one, it's interesting you bring that up because I meant to talk about this yesterday. A lot of people are wondering how explosive Donovan is right now. Can he dunk on dudes? Can he go to the rack and throw it down on a guy? I, I don't. He, I don't know the answer to that question. I think. I think to dunk on a guy, he can do that. But I think he's not high flying the same way a John Moran is, or you know, any other high flyer you want to look at. I yeah. think. I think Donovan used to be a little bit earlier in his career, but I think he's changed as as all great players do. You know, I think his game is maturing, and I think you know when when you go through that process, you understand that the mid-range is much more valuable to you than dunking on well, a guy. Well, and dunking on dudes generally shortens your career. I mean, yeah. you, you you are going to wind up getting injured there. Yeah. But it's just it was just an interesting conversation on Twitter the other night of whether or not – because Donovan, he had a couple of dunks the other night, but they were like, let me get my fingertips just over the rim. barely over yeah, the rim. <laughs> right? Like, so there were some people talking about that. But listen – I I am still firmly in the in Donovan Mitchell is a superstar. I am a I am on that train. This is one of the other conversations yeah. that's come out of the last week. Mm-hmm. Is Donovan Mitchell really a superstar? I'm gonna say yes, but I need this this next three months. Yeah. I think is critical to his career. I think the next three months for Donovan Mitchell, 
he has got to be healthy and he has got to have a playoff run. Mm-hmm. I think it is. I think it's a really critical moment in time because if I look across the west of the rest, Western Conference, um, I think you know the Lakers, the Clippers. I think the Suns are going to make a big trade. Um, I have that. I, I just don't think they're going to stand pat. Mm-hmm. I think they're really thirsty to get back to the finals. Um, I think the Nets are going to make a trade. I, I think this is going to be one crazy MFing trade deadline. Yeah. Um, that's coming up here. I think in the next week you're going to start seeing trades because what is today? Today's January 12th. Yeah. You're a month away from the trade deadline. Yeah. You're going to start coming. seeing these because li- you've seen little trades. You've yeah. seen the the Oni trade for a roster spot and. You're seeing that the Jazz, I would not be surprised. House is not going to get a second 10-day. No. Right? I mean, I think you're going to see the Jazz and many other teams make significant trades. Like, And when I think about the Chicago Bulls, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday in Chicago talking about they're out looking for a big. Yeah. Because they know Nikola Vucevic is not that dude. He's not that guy. Right? So when you hear about all of these teams – and you see the highlight video of Russ shooting air balls on, on you know, bank shots. Yep. And how bad he's been. LeBron supposedly is losing his shit behind the scenes. Like, hey, I'm not getting any younger. Or We're supposed to be winning a championship. Like, I think this trade deadline is going to be crazy. Yeah. And the Jazz need to be part of that. All right, yeah. let's get your conversation uh Let's get you into the conversation here. eBay, the sofa surfer says, wow, got in at the start. What's up, eBay? What's up, dude? James Knight says, morning, guys. Let, let's get the jazz hysteria hour going. Bro, think, why, why are you, why, why yeah, you why, say stuff like that? Why you be that, hating? Like, why, like, why, why say something like know. that, dude? I don't think we've been hysterical. Brylark says, morning, boys. Brylark, where you been, dude? Edgar Garcia says, what's up, players? Edgar, good to see you. Uh, eBay says, jazz will close the road, strip tr- road trip strong. Hello. Versus Cavs and Pacers. Well, they already did. Am I wrong that they're they're at they're at home, right? Thought they were, but this is not in Cleveland. I thought that was this is a home game. Why are you playing with my mind like that? Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's Pacers and Celtics. The Jazz are home. Yeah, that's a home game. Seven o'clock Mountain Time tonight. Yeah. Why are you playing with me like that? Making me think I'm crazy. Uh, Greg Hawkins, what's up? He says, just finished my stream, hopping right over to the Monty show. Hell yeah. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. What's up with you, man? We got to know about your stream. I'd have watched. I didn't know you were streaming. Um, hit me on the DMs on uh, Insta. Uh, yeah, slide Hawkins. into his DMs. Stop. He's a model and a TV star. You show Y'all some respect. Me? Hey. He's a big time dude. People think I was joking. Somebody DM me yesterday. Um, Larry DM me yesterday asking me if Greg Hawkins was really a TV guy. Yes. Yeah, he's for real. And he's like a model. Follow him on Instagram. I'm for real. Um, let's see. James Knight says, how about the uh, flog booker crying about a mascot? Wow. Well, you, you can. Are you referring to my guy as a flog? What does that even mean? I have no idea. I don't know. Tanner Plummer says, guys, guys, guys. Greg Hawkins, what's your stream? Tanner wants to know. Damar is the MVP and then Embiid. Joel Embiid is – and I, I I pause because Joel Embiid is added to his game. Yeah. he's a, You need a major bag alert on this. He's yeah, added – he's, um... he's put some more tricks into his into his bag. Yeah, yeah. man. Joel he's Embiid. Better. <laughs> that little step back to his left – is buckets. Yeah, it's deadly. It is buckets now. And and he's always had that little, hey, I'm a huge dude that can cross over. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Little handle. But now it's a crossover into a step back mm-hmm. that's legit Yeah, he a can knockdown. make it. He can make it. That's a, that's a knockdown for him, for yeah. sure. Uh, Kelsey Hamer, good morning to you. We, can we admit Shaq was right about Rudy Gobert in his contract? Uh, Kelsey says, we disrespected Shaq's opinion because his take was real. Rudy has no place making that money. Would Rudy make that one on the Lakers? No, and the record is trash. I, we Man, that we've had that conversation. We've gone down no that end. rabbit yeah. hole a million times, but Kelsey, I don't think you're wrong. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, Rudy, you deserve what somebody's willing to pay you. Mm-hmm. You are worth what somebody's willing to pay you. Dennis Lindsay was willing to pay you, on average, $40 million bucks a year. So that's what Rudy's value is. Unfortunately, you're paying the luxury tax and you're strapped with that contract probably for another season at least if you wanted to get out of it. And there's no indication the Jazz want to trade Rudy. Yeah. 
if you told me right now that Danny Ainge was like, yeah, I can make that trade, should I? He would. Yes. He would. That's every day. Yeah, he, I, I'm seriously. Uh, eBay says Bucks are better. Giannis is just not fair for an opponent. He really is. You're exactly right, eBay. He's unguardable. Yeah. Unguardable. Honestly, I feel like the Jazz need an overhaul, Edgar says, uh, with the exception of Donovan Mitchell. At least at that point, you know there is a plan they are working toward. Yeah. Well, listen, I think Danny Ainge has been on the job for 38 seconds. I mean, <laughs> we got to give the guy a minute to, you know, to really – and frankly – He's been on the job this season. He has been involved tracking the team this year. He's just officially gotten the title now. That's why I'm saying I think they're going to be – and I want to be careful about it. I People around the NBA believe that the Jazz are going to burn it to the ground. People around the NBA believe that they're going to overhaul this roster, that there's either going to be a major deal at the deadline or they are going to, to – really fire sale in the summer. You have a deal. And I think, yeah, I think that <clears throat> you're going to be Rudy and, and Donovan for the foreseeable future. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's just where you are. I mean, I don't know what, what other path you would take, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, I don't know what else you do because you're not, you're in that terrible no man's land of, of, professional sports yep you're not good enough to win a championship but you're good enough to be mid-table yep that's a terrible place to be and what that tells you is my old axiom of you know Dennis Lindsay had no idea who he was and where they were he had no idea and I think Danny Ainge has a very clear grasp on who the Utah Jazz are and where they sit yeah and that's why I think you're going to see he's going to tear this thing down because I and, and to be gentle I think Ryan Smith didn't become a billionaire by being an idiot. Yeah. Rich guys don't stay rich by being stupid. He's not going to keep paying the luxury tax to the tune that he is now. I don't think he has any problem paying the tax. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But why would you if you don't have to? Yeah, you wouldn't. And why you would wouldn't. you if it's not bringing you championships? Agreed. So, yeah, 100%. You know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, what would be funny after all the dust settles in the trade deadline? Jazz get Westbrook, Ben Simmons, and Dennis Schroeder. That would be a nightmare. Yeah, I want nothing to do with this Schroeder Richardson deal that's being talked about with Boston. Um, I don't know how real that is. You know, people, NBA people that I talk to say Boston only signed Dennis Schroeder to trade him. Mm -hmm. That's probably true. But what do the Jazz want with Dennis Schroeder? Yeah, I think uh, beyond yeah. an expiring contract. Yeah, I mean. Sure, I guess that's a nice little pickup, but I don't think that that Schroeder and you know going and doing that deal really accomplishes, you know what you're what you're looking for. So I I, I don't know. I I tend to agree. I don't think I would want any part of that. I don't really want any part of the Ben Simmons Tobias Harris sweepstakes. I, I that just doesn't seem. I yeah I you know. I crunched a lot of numbers on Ben Simmons yesterday. There's no way the Jazz can afford him. And again, I don't think. It's not even that he can't shoot. And I know we went into this in depth yesterday, but it's not even that Ben Simmons can't shoot. Yeah. He is mentally weak. He is broken offensively. I, I don't want to be the guy to prove that he can be reclamated. I don't, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. Let him go somewhere else and be a project. You know, like the, 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 the guard that had the weird shooting motion. For Markel Phil Fultz. Yes, Markel Fultz. I have no idea where he is. He's in Orlando. Uh, if you say so. He is. You know what I mean? Like He but, tore his ACL on a jump cut early in the year, and he's recovering. But you know what I mean? Like yeah. he's, he's, he's a, you don't come back from that. Yeah. I, I just – I can't see him – I don't know. Yeah. I can't see him being – I can't see Ben Simmons being a productive offensive player in this league. Other than attacking Rudy Gobert's chest, which he was very good at when he was actually, you know, playing. Yeah, and actually knew how to dunk a basketball. Yeah, come on. 